want a time to play The wind is smiling on my face There's something about your melody Hear it singing through the trees The rhythm's taking over me Let's go, let's take a ride Let's go light up the night I got you by my side, we'll survive Here we are. Hi, guys. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How'd you like our new intro? <laughs> it's called It's Our World, kind of. It's, yeah, that's it's, all it's, her, guys. It's kind so of our I, world. <laughs> I had absolutely nothing to do with that. You really didn't. Absolutely I, I, zero. I can, I can tell you. I, I literally showed it to him, what, 20 minutes ago? <laughs> I said, how do you like this, Jim Wooten? I said, yeah, that, that's fine. Whatever yeah. gets us yeah. to the show. So welcome, everybody. Welcome, Rick. Welcome, Johnny. Good yeah, to see guys. all you guys on. Hi, Jill. Jill Marie Burke. Woo <laughs> see you guys. Hey, Nelson. Hi, Michelle. Michelle, we have a we have a special show. We say this Hi, every Kim. week, but we really we really do this this week, and we say that every week too. <laughs> <laughs> we have a really good friend of ours on tonight. Yes. Who is? I'm very excited about this one. Beyond talented, but very near and dear to my heart. <laughs> what he does and what he portrays and who he is and it's it's just a special show yeah it's gonna be great i'm really really looking so let's, forward to who this is he I, I thought you were gonna tell well, us. I don't <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need any introduction no. it's juan del castillo yeah. from dsb come yeah. on guys Woo! one of the greatest singers in you know the tribute community oh man and and i have to tell you I have to, well, I don't know. Should I save this story when he's on or should I, should I tell you now when you took me to go see one, but he wasn't in DSP when I first saw one. Yeah, no, no, no. You'll have to. Should I save the story? Save that one, All right. I'll save the story. No, I, I, I call one uh, the eighth wonder of the world because I cannot for the <laughs> life of me figure out how he's been able to sing Steve Perry for as many years. He's, he's been singing Steve Perry stuff longer than Steve Perry did with Journey. He probably just doesn't talk to anybody during the day. Everyone probably talks to <laughs> very, very <laughs> I don't know. But but what he's able to pull off is absolutely phenomenal, guys. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Uh, and and we saw, I'll just put a, I'll just I'll tell a little bit of the first time I saw one because I am a huge yeah, Journey girl. Tell the Should I tell go the story? Tell All right. It. All right, I, I saw Journey, and we'll talk about this a little further into the show, but I saw Journey for the first time when I was 14 years old in 1982 at the mm -hmm. Rose Bowl, and it was a huge thing because I had ultra strict parents who were not good on me going to concerts, but they knew how much I loved Journey. Right. So they let my brother take me to Journey, um, to which I had to call on a payphone every hour home yeah. to make sure that you know I was still alive. <laughs> so just to clear it up, guys, <clears throat> She basically grew up with uh, the Bradys yeah. and I grew up with the Bundys. Yeah. Our, our situations were completely different. So in 1982, I saw Journey, Alda Nova, Triumph, Blue Easter Cold, and a little bit of Steve Perry solo stuff at the Rose Bowl. Um, and that was the beginning for me. So I've seen <laughs> Journey tributes through the years and Eh, eh, I've been, you know, they're okay. Really? You know, they never, they never quite did it for me because mm -hmm. I had, you know, I had this huge expectations. So Jim told me one night, we're going to go see this journey band. It's a band called lights and they're playing at Paladino's. Um, right. So I was like, kind of, kind of went in with a bad <laughs> attitude. I, a little bad. Attitude. <laughs> bad I mean, I wasn't, <laughs> I was, I wasn't real. I wasn't a believer right <laughs> off the bat. I sat there and listened to our friend Juan and he oh, flipping nailed it. <clears throat> oh, nailed man. it, nailed it, which no one has really ever done ever. Yeah, I remember for me. that. And and from that moment on, I've been a big, you know, lights DSB, and yeah. I just just think he's the best of the best. Yes, he, he is. Yeah. He is. That's so good job, Juan. Juan, that's why they're you did at it. the top of the food chain. 
<laughs> the blue jeans or whatever um, chain. So All right. here we are. Uh, welcome to WAW, the show uh, where important topics of the day are largely ignored. And foolishness reigns supreme. It's because we do not we do not tackle the obvious subjects. That's right. But we're here to ask the eternal question. What's, what's happening? happening? in everybody's world. So we yeah. see a lot of people popping on, you guys, um, 44 people so far. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, see if we can attack some of There's these Elena. questions here. Elena Hello. and Claire has joined us. Pamela know. has joined us. Nelson, yes, good to see all you guys. Hi, Melanie. Melanie has joined us as well. Uh, so um, I don't know what this week is like for you, but it's been a major stress fest for yeah, me, guys. Yeah. I'm like, my he head's not, ready to explode. Everyone thinks that Jim Wooten is easy to live with. <laughs> Come live in my house this week. It is not fun. He is he is a stress ball walking around, a big giant stress ball. Yeah, too much, too much uh, stress just, going on. He's now. used to COVID. I, I got I got too too used to the pandemic period. Yeah. You know what I mean? I just you know laying around yeah. watching Netflix and eating seeds candy. Uh, uh, it's not that anymore. Now it's like you know. Now you actually have to do something every day and put on pants. <laughs> Learning ten songs in one day. He actually has to put on pants every day. With. It's very stressful. <laughs> Put Not on. to mention that we have to actually take a shower these days. I so take showers every I will day. Oh, stop! No, it. I do. Don't go there. No, nope. you won't like where it ends up. I do. Me. I take uh, a shower every day. So <laughs> I do. <laughs> the shows for this week. Okay, so let me let me um, clue you in on what's happening here. Tomorrow night, uh, the Long Run is playing at um, in Redlands. It's in a in a shopping center. Yeah. Uh, Mountain Mountain uh, Grove, Grove at Citrus that's Plaza. Right. That's right. In Redlands. In Mountain Redlands. Mountain Grove at yep. Citrus Plaza. It's a free show. Uh, we start at 7. We end at 8.30. So if you're uh, in the Inland Empire, we encourage you to come on out and uh, join us for that one. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be fun. I Only because they're shopping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so so the only reason I'm excited. Um, driving right <laughs> home and then... Got to be at the airport at 6.15 in the morning to go to Houston. Uh, Led Zeppelin is going to be playing at a festival called the Midsummer Festival in Katy, Texas. So if anybody out there is in Texas, near Houston, I believe, yep, uh, come on out and join us there. I think the festival runs from 2 o'clock in the afternoon through till about 10 at night. Okay. That's that's not the end of that's it, guys. That's in Houston. That's in Houston. So you come back. We do a we do mm -hmm. a, a a benefit concert in Hemet. Hemet, yeah. Right. On Sunday Sunday afternoon, actually, uh, we are doing a, a memorial concert for the um, gentleman Brian Carrier was his name. He he booked the Hemet Theater, and we're doing a memorial concert, which is going to include um, Taylor Made Tapestry. Yeah. Pure Bread, which is the new tribute to uh, bread. Yep. Um, Deja Vu. Fantastic. And uh, Fortunate Son. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, I'm going to be playing with all, with of, all them. of them. Which, so, which are you surprised? It's really, a, people? <laughs> Come on. It's a if lot. Jim, of, Jim, yeah, that, if Jim Wooten's <laughs> in the room, everyone's going to grab him. That that's right. the reason for this for the stress, guys. I, I had to learn about ten songs. Actually, Again, in one day. All of you guys who think that Jim Wooten is this lappy, easy guy. Oh yeah, you know that. Come on, live in my shoes this week. That's oh, all I'm saying. Okay, so so then we have <laughs> candlelight for two two nights, and then well. Oh yeah, um, yeah, but, candlelight pavilion yeah. on Tuesday yeah. night of next week. So um, make note of the fact that uh, WAW is actually going to be on Monday. Monday night. Monday night. You guys, next week we have a a, a, a we we actually don't know him very well, but. But his name is Bettis, and he is in Pr Prince again. Yeah, Prince again, which and is he, a Prince tribute, and he looks um, fantastic. And they're yeah. they're playing all over the place. Yep. So um, we're going to introduce you to him on Monday. All right. But Tuesday night, if you're uh, fans of Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, come on out and join us at the Candlelight Pavilion in Claremont, California. Yeah, we're playing on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Starting at eight o'clock each night, and Thursday we're doing the fair. Thursday's uh, the Orange County Fair. With, Friday with the long run. Friday, Saturday, San Manuel Casino with Led Zeppelin. Yep. So now you know the reason for the stress. All right. Well, no. Anyway, Juan knows the, the, this type of schedule very <laughs> he does. well. He does. He, very he well. It. 
All <laughs> they right. play so many shows every year. So let's talk about our sponsors. So yeah. we have uh, Calvin from Calvin's Auto Repair. That's right. Uh, if you need a car to, or truck. Go see Cal. If you want to save a buck. Go see Cal. Take your car and call your wife. <laughs> she will love you all her life. Go, go see, see Cal. Cal. Go see Cal. <laughs> Go see Calvin Ellis. <laughs> Calvin so, Ellis Auto Repair. So, guys, though, if you go see Calvin, you you mention WAW, and he will give you ten percent off of whatever service, that's right. whatever service you have. Right, that's right. And transmission, new engine. Remember last week, I told you we're going to go and we're going to see Calvin because my engine light was on. Yeah. Uh, so it was my gas cap, guys. Yep. Is my gas? We cap. like that kind of a uh, yeah. <laughs> kind didn't, of didn't day. cost us a cent, so uh, we were very happy about that. But, All right. Um, yeah, yeah. Remember to mention WAW, and you will get ten percent off of any service that he does for you. All right. I'm going to touch on my cups for one second, you guys. If you if you like tumblers. I will make you custom tumblers, whatever you like. Actually, Juan, if you pay attention to the right-hand corner of the screen, <laughs> Bob Bacon got a DSB tumbler. Um, I think he calls himself DSB Bob. Yeah, I think so. Because that's what I put on the tumbler. So <laughs> he was he was so happy to get that, and I made that for him. And, and uh, yeah, so... These tumblers are double walled tumblers, 24 hours hot, or I'm sorry, 24 hours cold, six hours hot. I can make anything, anything. Anything, she yeah, really can. Yeah. And right now I have 12 orders in the queue, so it's it's cooking. All right, let's talk no, about- No, actually I'll be cooking, Yeah, right? Yeah, are you? <laughs> Next week, we obviously tonight we have Juan on. Next week we have Bettis. And then the following week on the 27th, which is a Tuesday. That's right. And not a Wednesday because of Jim's schedule, we have Gregory Finsley from Queen Nation. Yeah, that's right. So we have an exciting exciting couple shows, but out and, and the month of August. It's going to be very cool. Yeah, we've got some great- August is booked. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be- uh, going to be a fun month uh but i think we're just about ready yeah. to uh bring on our very special guest yeah yeah <laughs> looking forward to this this is going to be a blast guys <laughs> all right uh, want to do a little intro for us yeah, yeah. well you got the intro right? well no you want to verbally do an intro oh, and I'll pull well, them in. yeah like i said <laughs> uh this is one of the guys in the tribute scene that needs no introduction everybody knows who Juan is everybody's gone to see them because they're the best in the world at yeah. what they do and he's the best in the world at what he does and honestly he should be in journey himself i mean yep. i like arnell but i think Juan's better than him <laughs> and well judge for yourself watch the video all right <laughs> Yeah. 
Hey. hey. Oh, oh, you guys look great. Look at you. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm just happy to be here with you guys. I wasn't kidding when I said uh, I get to chat with the, the sweetest couple in the business. Oh, <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're so glad to have you, man. Uh, I, I've been a huge fan of your, yours and the band for years, ever since you started um, singing uh, Journey Steph. So um, it's going to be great to finally get to find out a little bit more about your background, you know, how you got started, uh, you know, what other types of musical projects uh, you were involved in. And in fact, why don't we just start with wh where were you born? Uh, one was it, are you a, a Southern Cal guy? Or? Yeah, I was born and raised in San Diego. So, oh really? Uh, yeah, hey. America's finest city, and I oh, yeah. never, I probably never would have left if it wasn't for the business that we're in. You, know, you got to yeah. be in LA, you got to be in New York or Miami to do anything in this business. Right. So, you know, what, I, when did you move up, uh, up into the LA County? Not until '97 uh, is when I came up to. Oh wow! I, I was, I was in, I was in New York for a while as well, and came. The oh really? Yeah, yeah. I thought I wanted to do theater and all that stuff because that's where i came from you know doing theater oh, interesting. I, I, as a that's kid that. yeah i started uh i started taking piano when i was six years old and then singing lessons when i was about eight so by nine years old i was already doing uh stage productions and and did wow. that for for quite a bit of time so yeah people laugh when i say i have a 30 plus year career doing what i'm doing but when amazing. you love it what are you gonna do you gotta that's find cool. the outlets to do it right that's no so, so that leads to my next question. So we just found out you did theater. So when, okay, so you started off with theater. When did you realize you have this amazing voice and you wanted to go into music? Uh, like I said, singing lessons was, was when, I, when I was eight years old. Uh, I was taking my, my piano teacher would hear me sing along to what he was playing sometimes and and he was like, let me let me set up an audition for you for this musical. And and I went in and booked it. And then I had a little featured role in that. But uh, it wasn't, a, I went through, like I said, musical theater. Then I did like operettas and stuff. And I studied classically really early on. I was a boy soprano. And uh, <laughs> then I went through the voice change. I went through the voice change. And that was really tough. For any of you guys know, you guys, I mean, I'm still waiting for you to go through your voice change, Jim, because you can't say <laughs> Well, I was going to say, say it way higher than I do. It's crazy. It's crazy you, mean, but, uh, you sang higher than that when you, before the change? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, I was singing as high as, as Blondie next to you, you know, probably that high. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was, it was. That's just what happens, you know. You you go through the voice change. I went from having you know a good close to four octaves to like about six notes. Wow! Um, it was yeah. it was believe it or not. I mean, you don't hear a lot about musicians or singers that go through this, but wow. it was pretty emotional because I was working a lot at that time, yeah. and to not be able to work, so it was really just on. I couldn't work, so I had about six notes, and I rested for about almost a year before it started wow. coming back. And what came back was kind of a baritone sort of sound. And it wasn't until, uh, you know, choir and so forth where I was starting to sing the alto and some of the soprano stuff a little bit and pushing my voice and stretching it out. And it took, it was in, when I was in my teens is when it finally uh, started to expand. Do you, you, know? do you remember uh, how old you are, uh, how old you were when you took the year off? Uh, yeah, I, d I remember distinctly because I was in the middle of a, I was in the middle of the drama. It was a it was a show uh, at the Old Globe Theater in San Diego, and uh, and I was playing a troubled teen, and I was in an argument with my mother. And I'm speaking. And I'm there's like a you know, sort of an argument. And I'm like I'm like ah, 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 ah. no, ah. you know, my voice cracked enough to the entire audience heard it, and that was the kind of the beginning of the end <laughs> for a minute. Oh, so I remember distinctly. It was 12 going on 13. That's when my voice started to change, and and it took. It took quite a few years before I, I finally found my voice, wow. which is kind of the journey for every every singer. It takes some time. You have to, you don't yeah. really know what your voice is until you're able to to push its limits and stretch it out. And okay. yeah, that's how that's how that works. So to answer your question, yeah. uh, kind of the long way around. It really <laughs> wasn't until I was in my early twenties singing karaoke. You know, everybody, you know, would take turns doing the karaoke thing. But whenever I sang the journey stuff, people would go nuts. And, and that's when I kind of oh. realized that 
but it would be fun and you know got some free drinks and you know yeah. met a lot of people that way yeah, yeah. um since you had been um uh taking piano lessons did, did you ever think about um actually playing keys in a band or did you kind of like leave that behind when the singing came uh more prominent for you I'm a musician, but not not a very proficient uh, uh, instrumentalist. You know, I, I think a, a lot of people who who fall in love with the stage. Uh, there's there's so many avenues on the stage. Whether you're whether you're doing musicals or you're acting or or you're there's even the recording side of it. I just I really really focused on singing and and really honing in on my instrument that way. And any opportunity I had to to be in public singing, I would do it. And uh, when I, like I said, I started young and that led to other things, including television and, and commercials and film and all those kinds of things, which I did throughout my teens as well. Uh, uh -huh. It was just crazy. I learned early on, wait a second, I can do this and make a little money too. I'm like, this is, yeah. this is really cool. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So about, I was about 14. No, I was 15 now at this point in time. And I, uh, I approached three of my really good friends and I said, Hey, let's let's put a group together a doo-wop group and let's just let's see what happens you know let's let's learn some music and see what happens and you yes. know at 15 years old i was i made my first pitch to a theme park and they bought wow. it and wow. uh the, the three of uh, the three other gentlemen steve and and simon and, and and jason we all joined forces and we did that for almost 10 years We're wow, wow. And then, probably every every county and state fair <laughs> <laughs> on the west coast doing the doo-wop thing and that was i guess you could say that was kind of my first band but it was really yeah. allowed allowed me to to kind of spread my wings and, and find my place and or or to at least know what direction i wanted to go what was it was it all acapella singing or did you exactly did yeah really? the touring was the touring was really easy all you needed to do is get in a car that sat four people and a pitch pipe it was great <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, try doing that now. <laughs> <laughs> did did uh, did you have somebody that arranged all the vocals, or did you guys yeah. sight read? Yeah. Actually, yeah, like I said, we were all really good friends, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of the guys, Steve, he's uh, just one of those jack of all trades guys. He was really good at arranging parts, and we would uh, you know learn arrangements of all the doo wop stuff, everything from like 1958 to like 1964 or something like that. And we were doing Dion the Belmonts and the Dell Vikings and all these great, all these great, uh, you know, at, at that time, this was like in the early 90s, you know, that's that's the the, the crowd that was booking shows and so forth. Now it's all the people that grew up listening to classic rock. So if you're doing corporate shows, the buyers are typically people who grew up listening to that versus back in the nineties, it was people who grew up listening to do what? Yeah. Wow, okay. So, 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 you know, this would be my question. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is something interesting about you that no one else knows? I'm fluent in Spanish, maybe. Ooh, okay. That. It was actually Spanish was actually my first language. Right? Are you serious? Wow. Yeah, yeah. That was your first language. Man, yeah, my first language. Well, not, huh? not at all, ever. Yeah, no, no. I'm first. I am American, but I'm first generation born here in the United okay. States. My parents. Uh, my mom was born in San Diego, but she was. It was part of the immigration. But my my father was is from uh, Jalisco. Oh. Yeah. So very tied into my to my Mexican and and, and Latino awesome. roots. Oh, that's yeah, very that's cool. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of interesting to me, I guess. It is yeah. very, it, yeah. very much. Yeah. Is yeah. And I'm sure you heard my my uh, I, I I the light story where Jim said he's I'm going to take you to go see a Journey band, and I'm like, all right. And I walked in with with a little bit of a bad attitude. I, I feel like I might have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took it. You know, yeah, he'd been he some some <laughs> concerts in the park and some beach ones, yeah. and I kind of walked away thinking, yeah, they were fine, they were good, <laughs> they were good. Well, I'm telling you, I walked in with a little bit of bad attitude to Paladinos at the light show, and it must have been about I, maybe 1997. 90, no, 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 it wasn't. We were talking 2006. 2000. You started 2006. in six. Yeah, and I love your story actually because uh, I remember Paladinos. They were, they were the first. They were the first venue to to take a shot on us. To be honest, yeah. I came from somewhere in between what we were talking about. I came from original music, and I was signed to a label and was doing my own original music and and, and sort of project and stuff. And and yeah. the whole story about how I got involved in the, in the journey stuff is that's. 
that is just crazy. I, a lot <laughs> of it just kind of kind of formulated. It, I was yeah. working on original music, and a guitarist friend of mine was in tracking. I was uh, I was tracking him doing doing some sp some Spanish guitar stuff for for some original stuff, and then. Uh, when he left, he's like, "Hey, you know, I heard you singing all that Journey stuff, or you, you, you know, you sound like Steve Perry, whatever." I I just came across this Craigslist ad that for a band looking for a singer, uh, and I'm I'm like like a, like a somebody that sound alike. What are they looking for? I had nothing. I had no knowledge of the tribute team whatsoever. Because again, this is 2006, really wasn't uh, that prevalent at the time, and uh, so I set up an audition. Uh, and went in and before I knew it, I was now the lead singer of a band called Lights. And, and it was it was just kind of, it was kind of a whirlwind because I didn't know what to expect. I thought I was gonna have to dress up and, and, and do all that, but I'm happy that I didn't have to because I don't own a set of, of tuxedo tails. So uh, I didn't have to, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to do all that, but I gotta tell you, it was, it was the best experience of my life uh, in, in terms of my, you know, where I'm at right now in my life because I met, uh, uh, you know, a brother, I bet, uh, you know, J Mr. Jeff Vincent and, uh, oh, yeah, Jeff yeah. He's, he's since become, you know, family to me. And he's, he's my, he's my, uh, middle daughter's, uh, godfather. And, and oh, wow. you, know, he's, oh, wow. you know, he, when we were in lights and so forth, you know, uh, lights was just, it, it was a great, it was a great vehicle to, to mm -hmm. kind of test drive and, and just see what, what the potential yeah. was. But when I realized what, what could happen with, with what we were doing, uh, you know, I knew that we were going to need people that that were wanting to go in a direction to do a more full time, and sure. so so Jeff and I sought sought that out, and that was the the beginning of DSB back and uh, started searching like in two thousand excuse me two thousand eight, and then two thousand nine we had. Well, it you know, it's, it's funny what because you probably don't realize this, but when Lights first played at Paladinos, um, there was like a huge buzz to that show. Um, really. really? Friend Scott Richards uh, that plays in Which One's Pink now. Yeah, yeah. He had been to see you that night, and I've always been a huge Journey fan. In fact, I was in a Journey band called Infinity yeah. uh, just prior to joining Led yeah. Zeppelin. It, it yeah, was not with, with David like, Coyle. With David Coyle, right? It was, it was Led Zeppelin yeah. or Infinity. Yeah, that was I, a choice. I, you know, and <laughs> it was only because it was only because Led Zeppelin was just working so much, and I knew that would work towards, like you said, it would be a, a full time situation for me that I made the. I lost you for a second. Oh yeah, in fact, yeah, Dave came to one of my first show with Led Zeppelin, and he said, "Look, he says I know you joined us first, and you 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 know feel like you need to be loyal, but." I, I know you got to go this direction because these guys do 120 to 130 shows a year and yeah. you'll make a living yeah. doing it. And yeah. I, I, I said, hey, in fact, I, I um, uh, told him about Scott Richards and Scott took my place in the group. Oh. So, so that's uh, so that's, that's why I got me to go see you that night because he was a huge Journey fan. OK. And when he came back from that show, he says, hey, I got to tell you. That guy hit every note every and note. did not back off of anything. He said he was com completely fearless in every tune. There were, he said there was nothing that you didn't go after. And I was like, okay, we're going to see him the next time. And that's when I brought her. <laughs> well, I take the word tribute very seriously. I do. Oh, okay. yeah. You know, there's a lot of cover bands and no knock on cover bands, but that's a distinction for me between being a tribute act or being a, a, a cover band is, you know, although we don't dress like, you know, we've, I've never dressed like Steve Perry to pay tribute to, to Journey or Steve Perry, but it, when you are doing it like they did it, when you're like, everything I sing is either, is either something that was on the record, which is our, our primary basis, or it's something that I've pulled from something live. I really don't. I really don't like to do stuff that's originally mine because that's that takes us away from the tribute side of it. No, and no, I think, and, and 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 truthfully, that's 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 the fun in it. The fun in it. Mm -hmm. I've always said that if if you can't get excited about being accurate, mm -hmm. then you're in the wrong band. You're in the yeah, wrong that's field true. because that's the thing when you when you nail when you nail everything, including the mistakes, which is kind of. <laughs> funny, that's kind of funny. Now we, we always talk about in the in Wheel in the Sky. There's 
coming out of the guitar solo. There's there's a part where where uh, it stays, the bass line stays on one note only in one time in the entire song. Yes, and, yes. and it's and, and it's like we've kind of said I don't think it was supposed to do that. that that's probably yeah. something that wasn't caught, but you got to play it that way if you're a tribute act, right? That's right. That's Absolutely, right. So, I love that. Was there ever a point in time because you're in the tribute world and everybody? physically tries to look like the the artist they're portraying. Was there ever a point in time that you considered it or were you like, I don't need it? We almost booked a show on Halloween. <laughs> and we, we thought that would be the perfect time to come out dressed like Journey. And, you know, I don't know, maybe at some point go back to being who we are or whatever. But Halloween would be for us, probably the, the best excuse to do it. But, <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, I, it's, you know, we're, it's, it's about the music. Yeah. That, that's the thing for us. It's like, anytime we are playing anywhere, as you know, as you know, Jim, you come in with an arsenal of hits. It's like, people already yeah. know, they, they know they're going to have a good time. And all you got to do is you're literally like the, the server at a restaurant. You're just yeah. grabbing the food, bringing them and you, you're, you're right. Just, you're right. You're, seriously. You Absolutely. Are. It's, you're right. And, uh, and that's and that's funny. You were talking about uh, you were talking about how you didn't come in with too many expectations because th- we always call that our magic trick. You know, it's seeing DSB the first time. It's like you you expect us to not sound the way you want us to sound. Yeah. When, when, if we pleasantly surprise you, then hopefully we've made a friend for for life. You did. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. You absolutely, absolutely did. Uh, oh, before we we go on uh, to the next question, I just wanted to find out real quick one. Is there any song in the Journey catalog that you go, that you said to yourself, yeah. man, that's a tough one. Well, I'm going to have to like stress about this when we do this <laughs> live. Is there one song in particular that you go, man, this is there are, there are several. Uh, it, it's funny. Uh, one that comes to my head right now is probably Mother Father. We've played it before. Oh, I love, I love, I love that. It's kind of, it's like an opus, you know. It's 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 uh it's it's Journey's Bohemian Rhapsody, you know. Uh, yes, yes. It's an amazing tune, and and I was always able to sing all of it. But when you get to that high falsetto at the end, yes. After you, if you're doing it as a standalone, it's it's you can probably work your way up to that. But but you know, yes. Steve Perry is there's only one of those guys, and and <laughs> to think that to think that he would put that in the middle of the show after singing open arms or after yes. uh, you know before singing dead or alive like that that's where he would put that and still reach that i, I don't know that i could i don't know that i could t- i could hit all that you know yes. uh, in in the context of a, of, a, of a 90 minute show but you know, you know uh, it's a heartful you, song you know what my favorite steve perry moment is and um people that don't know uh journey very well i always uh, if they come over to the house, I put it on Alexa for them. The middle <laughs> vocal break on uh, "Sweet and Simple." Oh my! There it is. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, huge, riff, that huge riff where it goes up to the, the was it a, a flat? I believe. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And See, the I came in, that's what I'm telling you. I came in. I came into this whole tribute thing completely blind. I, I knew well, Journey's Greatest Hits. That was my, whenever I'd drive to Vegas or whatever, I'd pop in that CD and I'd sing the whole way. That's how I knew that I, I could do it. I, there was the only, that was the only way I, 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 you know, it's not like there's an audition you prepare for it typically to go sing somebody else's crazy vocals. But the only reason I knew I could do it is because I could do it, you know, on the drive to Vegas. And, and that's all I knew. And it wasn't until I met Jeff and, and, uh, and, he showed me all the other stuff that like the mother fathers who had simples uh so so many open the door all these great amazing classic songs that i'd never heard and 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 uh yeah that's that's i guess that's when i can say that i that i became uh, a super fan because <laughs> you have to, you have to be a fan to 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 be a tribute to that you person do. You, you, have to, absolutely do. 100%. you absolutely do yeah. you have to love the band yeah. that you're doing you yeah. have to because a lot of people don't understand that yeah they see pictures of us playing you know for you know 10 000 15 000 people but you're also yeah. doing the corporate party where you're wallpaper and you're 100 100 people there and yeah. nobody could care right. Nobody even cares about you know what you're singing, so you really have to love it, and you really have to get excited about being accurate in order to to get any sort of artistic fulfillment from it. Absolutely, yeah, to feel Absolutely. it. So, so DSB. Let's talk about DSB. What? Let's what, talk. Yeah. When, when did that start? What was the, what prompted DSB? Well, uh, 
as I mentioned before, when I was 15, I wanted to, I was seeking out ways to make an income doing what I love to do that early. So it was kind of the same thing when DSB came around, uh, like we, I was, you know, I was in light starting in 2006 and towards the end of 2008, it just became apparent that, that uh, everyone was very, you know, comfortable, you know, kind of doing it from time to time. And I, and I knew we could do a hundred shows a year. I just knew it. And I knew my, my voice was holding up at that time. And I was like, I could do this. I could do this. And, and spoke to, spoke to Jeff uh, about it. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's proceed in that direction. And, and I was like, I know exactly what we need. I just came, I just did a show out in Vegas with another act that I was performing with at the time called the Alley Cats, which was also a do up, a do up group, uh, super fun, super fun group. Uh, but, uh, uh, the, the three guys at the time were, you know, Scotty, Roger and Tony were playing in a band at hard rock. And I had gone over there to check, to check them out. And I was like, immediately I called Jeff. I was like, Jeff, if we got these three guys in a band called sandbox and we got these three guys, we yeah. could really have something. And this was probably November, December of 2008. And okay, it was kind of scary, but we kind of already had the Canyon Club date in the books in January. So those three guys had just a, just about a month of playing shows and, and wow. learning all the material. So when you saw us at Canyon in 2009, yes. we never mounted those, those, those songs. We'd never performed those songs ever. So uh, yeah, it was really, I mean, I just, all I can do is just just thank the you know the prior members and 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 just say that uh, I, I appreciate them having faith in the vision because here we are you know thir almost thirteen years later in DSB and I've been doing this for fifteen years which is mm -hmm. crazy I never would have thought never would have thought yeah so Sal has a question uh, Sal wants to know has DSB ever performed of a lifetime we haven't and i love it i love it i think especially especially with miles in the band and so forth i think he would love to play that it's it's one of those you know progressive it's, it's one of those that i think we have this internal joke in the band that's when people would go to the bathroom but but the, <laughs> but the, the point is it's it's it is it is a very very uh it, it's a mood song it's a mood song you know and 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 i I love it. I love the riff. I love I love the drum pattern. Uh, it's so essentially gr uh, Greg Raleigh journey that it would be a shame not to ever perform that. But we're talking about we're talking about cycling some of these songs in because we've been doing, you know, greatest hits and and yeah. you know some extras for so long now that I feel like I feel like we could book a two hour or two and a half hour show and incorporate. Some. Oh yeah. I mean I, I've said it a million times. The greatest hits are great because everyone wants to hear that, but then we have that the five people in the room that want to hear the deep cuts. Yeah, exactly. We have to, we have to meet their needs. And, and that's why, you know, we throw an escape. And the, there was a period in time we were doing feeling that way in any time as well. And I think we're going to be bringing those back. But yeah, oh. you have to, you because you're a tribute, you do have to appeal to the to the diehards, the ones that are standing there with their arms crossed, looking at you, trying to decide if they like you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do that, you know. You know, um, man, one song that I've always loved, but a, a lot of people don't even know what it is, but um, the tune off of Departure, Homemade Love. Yes, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. man, that yeah. rocks, and his so voice good. on that so is good. incredible. Oh, everything so everything that Roy Thomas Baker produced for Journey, I just, yeah. it was funny. I never understood why I liked Journey so much and why I like Queen so much. And then as time went on, I was like, oh, well, the producer's the same, so that kind of makes sense. But you know those vocals. I, I love that. You know his his style was to feature, make making making the vocals at the star of the show. Because in music, like I told you, as an instrumentalist, I'm I'm you know I'm I can track and and play little things here and there. But I'm I, you know there's always been people better than me to play on stage. So I just handle the vocals. But when I when I was listening, the bands that are my favorites, I would always gravitate towards the singers. It's it's the Brad Delps, it's the Freddie Mercury's, it's the you know obviously the Steve Perry's of, of the world. But that's that's what I would. That's what I would uh, gravitate towards uh, are the just the powerful singers, David yeah. Coverfield, you know, all the Coverdale. Sure, sure. Yeah. Well, but, so you, you just talked about how um, you f put the band together. So you and Jeff basically departed from from uh, Lights. Correct. And yeah. So then you found um, Roger, uh, Tony, and, um, and Scotty, Scott. right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Scott. And, and so, I mean, was was there anything in particular you were looking for as far as their musicianship? Or when, once they got in, did you kind of have to school them in, in the, you know, train of thought of learning things exactly off of the record? Or, or how was that? Were they, did they come in with that? That conversation they... happened early on. That was like, because I was already friendly with, with Scotty at the time. And, and he approached me. Uh, when I mentioned the, the the journey thing, he was like, "Yeah, that sounds interesting." I said, "You have to understand, it's different than the cover band." Explained why, um, but uh, what I what I always look for in the band is, as as you guys know, uh, the the personal chemistry is almost more important than the musical chemistry. You know, you can find there's especially in LA, you can find talented musicians. You know, you throw a rock, you're going to hit one, but it, it's the it's the it's the the group together because you spend so much time together. You're on the road. You're you're backstage, yeah. and if if you genuinely don't like each other or there, there's issues like that, it shows up on stage. It really does. <laughs> so yeah. So my criteria obviously is you know you 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 listen and you find musicians that you you can appreciate their 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 proficiency or their or their musicianship. But at the same time, you got to be able to have a drink with them too. You got to be able to have yeah. a beer with them and, and chat and and you know you have to you have to be on a layover. You know you have yeah. to have a canceled flight. You have to have a flat tire. You have to have a. You, you have to go through all that, and that's, then, right. that's what determines the longevity of. of, of and of you the have band. to work through it. That's right. You do. You do, and and that's the thing. You got five personalities. Yeah. You know, everyone just kind of came together and from different walks of life, and when you when you have that, it's, and you have really that mix, you got to hang on to it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, so in the last several years. Um, those original members have have been replaced when you when you found all of their replacements what were you looking for you know in those i mean how did you find henry how did you find miles um well well tony has been a constant right he's he's been tony's from been from the beginning yeah and and <laughs> it's funny you say you say replacement nobody was replaced everyone just kind of moved on you know yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not like taking white out, you know, and like Xing out their names, you know. I'm not doing that. No, by by no means is it like you know, does it come from that? But you know, yes. it's funny. I was listening to uh, to John Bon Jovi uh, on 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 Stern at one point, and he kind of put it the best. It's a little salty, but he put it the best. He says, you know, being in Bon Jovi is is not a life sentence, and and I kind of look at it that way with DSP. Like as long as as long as you're enjoying yourself, as long as you're contributing and you're having fun. Then you know, obviously, no, we're not going to you know look anywhere else. But if if you're feeling like you're you need fulfillment elsewhere, then you know just just let us know and and you know we'll we'll work it out. But uh, you know when we Henry was he came out because what ended up happening was you know Jeff started uh, DSB with me back in two thousand nine and his his father took. Uh, he took ill and he wasn't doing well. And and Jeff made a very honorable decision. He 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 wanted his his daughter to get to know his father. So he he moved the family out to Chicago. Made the toughest choice because DSB was finally getting traction. It took oh, forever. Man. It took wow. forever, a year and a half before we're finally seeing anything close to what where we are now. And yeah. uh, he made that decision to go out and do that. And it, it was funny at the time. I was with the Alley Cats and and Henry had kind of come into the alley cat circle as well. And, and we got along really well. And, and I knew he played keys really well and sang really well. So we had auditions for that, but at the same time, I, I had a really good feeling that he was going to be the guy. Um, and how about uh, now, Danny, I know um, he actually lives out there um, near you in Vegas, right? He does. Yeah. That was funny. He, he was playing a lot in casinos as well. Okay, so let me just backtrack just a little bit. The common thread between yeah. all of us, and I hope you're listening, Peter Love. Yeah, is Peter Love. Uh, do you know Peter Love? I don't know if you know, if you know. Oh, I, I he's, don't... he's a he's just an absolute uh, workhorse, and is he's a musician here in Vegas and plays all the time. Well, that's it's Tony's brother. It's oh, Tony's brother. So when when Sandbox needed a bassist because of the relationship with Peter uh, that that Scotty and Roger had, that's how they brought Tony on. And kind of the same situation happened with with uh, with with uh, Danny because Danny was playing with Peter at the time, and 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 Peter actually sent that recommendation our way. So 
Uh, I owe everything that everything uh, every casting decision to Peter Love. I think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I never. I never knew how that, no, how that came no, about. No, not at all. Isn't so it crazy? It's it's all. I don't. You know, people always say it's like the music business. It's, it's who you know, and I always say no. It's who knows you. You know, yeah, because that's yeah, that's right. really how it is. It's like. Although there, you can do the auditions and see a bunch of people as as the people in the band. We don't really; it's not a very comfortable thing for us to do and and sit there, sit back and 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 you know, kind of adjudicate on somebody else. It's nicer to to have somebody who's recommended or vetted to come in and, sure. and step in, just like you did with you know leaving leaving Infinity and and that, yeah. you know. But uh, so that's sure. a, that's a Danny came along and and then. Miles is just, you know, through via social media, we just became friends. And, and uh, at one point in time, he's like, Hey man, you know, it'd be cool to, to sit in with you guys. And I was like, yeah, that's a great idea. I was going to talk to you about that too. And, and uh, he came down, we were doing a show at the house of blues and just kind of in, within a 24 hour period, he was coming down and I was making sure that we had what he needed for him to come on, come on stage. And Roger was gracious enough to, to you know, to to step aside for a second while Miles joined us on stage, and and Roger would play rhythm guitar as well, and and it was just it was super fun. And the, at that point in time, you know, Miles became a friend of the band, and uh, and when Roger decided to move on and 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 go on to uh, the Pat Benatar tribute, uh, Pat Benatar experience, mm -hmm. it. I just, you know, spoke with Miles, and Miles is more more than happy to to join us, and and you know that's how you get the current lineup. Wow, wow, that's yeah. interesting. It's amazing. Yeah, I was talking to Miles after um, the last show that we did together, and man, that guy has that tone dialed in. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. He, he really does. does. He really he does. does. I was, I was blown away. I mean, he he that, really, that was in Catalina he, where we yeah Catalina we, 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 we were really Catalina. Were able yeah. to hear. It. Yeah. Yeah, he he nailed it. So um, yeah, that that was a real find uh, bringing him in there. I I knew it was going to be tough you know, to uh, have somebody step in for Roger, but man, you guys haven't, haven't missed a step with that one. <laughs> well, we're fortunate. We're fortunate to be able to have the schedule that we have and, and, and you know, be plugged in, in into the network of people that, that you know, where we're, we're the fit just kind of happens sometimes, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and that's been very helpful too during during COVID and stuff because yeah. you know, oh, not, sure. not everybody's been available. Everybody has their you know, their, right. their familial right. situations or whatever. So we've mm -hmm. kind of we've kind of augmented our cast a little bit too to to reflect, uh, to be able to fill in whenever you know we don't have everyone available, and that's that's another kind of a godsend as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, I mean, with with Zep again, we know traveling with Swan. When yeah. when I first started traveling with Swan, uh, for the first like three days, he he didn't talk to me, and I was like. <laughs> Does he hate me? I don't know. If he, I, I don't know. If he just doesn't like me. And then after a while, I, I learned after years and years of traveling with Swan, I realized he just doesn't talk during the day. He doesn't. He doesn't say anything before a show. Doesn't hate me. Just just preparing. How do you prepare for a show? Because you sing some very. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It, it it's up there um but yeah that's talking any any vocal pathologist or, or ent is going to tell you that talking is the worst thing for you and it's funny you're catching me today because i was actually on the phone today doing a lot of business so my voice is you know and then being in the dry vegas even my voice is a little bit more tired today than normal but yeah talking is 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 the killer that's the killer so my formula has always been uh no alcohol and yeah. and sleep like full, like full nights of sleep. When I'm at home and I'm dad and I'm husband and I'm and I'm here, you know, if I get four or five hours, six hours, that's not a big deal. But when it comes, my my wife Stacy, she's come to learn that, especially on uh, leading up to a gig day, it's like I got to get those eight to nine hours because that's the only way you regenerate. Right. I'll I'll never right. forget. That's one of the reasons I, I I love your story about seeing lights at Paladinos. I'll never forget. The, the morning after my first show with lights was at BB King's at city walk. Yeah. And, and I remember I was, I was fired up. I was ready to go, did the whole show that next morning when I woke up, I was way down here. I, <laughs> I, I, just, I was like, I was like, I was panicked. I was panicked. I was like, I've never, I don't know that I had put my voice through that sort of, uh, of an obstacle course before and I didn't know the next day if I was going to be able to do the show the next day. 
<laughs> so I'm like, I'm telling the guys going like, I don't know if this is for me, but come six o'clock, seven yes. o'clock, it just starts to wake up. But you're right. Talking during the day. Yeah. And, and I should say that too, for a lot of, a lot of our friends who see us out, you know, it's like, I, yeah. I'm very happy to, to, to say hello and, and, and hug and, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I do kind of try to keep it short because I want to save my voice so I can be there for you guys. Well, yeah, you know, the, and that brings up the question, over those 15 years, have you ever gotten laryngitis? Oh, before a show, before a Has show. Has that ever happened? It's happened one time in 15 years. I think that's a pretty good record, pretty good record. But see, that's the thing. Because of the schedule that we keep, I have to sing if I have a cold, if I have stomach flu, if I have, and I and I've done that. I've had. I remember being at, at uh, Romano's one time, and in the in the middle of a of a guitar solo, which goes on forever, as you know, uh, in the middle of that, I, I I had to go off stage and you know into a bucket. Wow. What? I mean, that's, yeah, and then and then and that's then, gonna then happen, right? Yeah, that's and then happen. Bud Bud ran to the Vons and got me yeah. some ginger ale. Like he's oh. taking care of me like that, and I'm literally <laughs> wiping my mouth, coming out and saying, "Anyway, you know, it's, it's <laughs> well, just one of those things." Yeah. When you when you did get the laryngitis, did you have to cancel any shows due to that? On a technicality, no, because there were some issues at the venue, and and as a result, we just agreed to just reschedule. So I, it really wasn't a cancellation as much as it was, uh, like I said, a reschedule. But we, you know, we were doing so much traveling out east; it was very easy to to just kind of find a different date, and we went in and 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 did the show on the alternate date, and it turned out turned out great. But it's pretty crazy that in 15 years, and especially since 2000, I would say 2012 is really when we hit our stride and was doing over 120 shows a year. So yeah, by by 13 and 14, we were doing you know 12,000 miles in, in a bus. You know, it was pretty crazy. It got pretty crazy there for a minute. I mean, and I had I had a newborn at home, and I'm just like, ah, newborn. It was, it, it was nuts. It was nuts. It was nuts during that time. I mean, that that singing is just so strenuous. And and even, you know, Steve Perry himself, uh, you, you look at around the time they recorded Frontiers. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, something's happened here. He, his well, voice. Yeah, Gee. you know, what, what it was was 167 dates on the Escape Tour. That's, That's the yeah. That's But see, was... here's the thing, like, you know, for me, and, and I have to explain this to sound guys all the time, you know, got help them sometimes. <laughs> but uh, it's finesse singing. It's not, it's not volume. It's not, I'm not pushing. I'm not in a Judas Priest, you no. know, a band. And it's, it's all, it's lyrical. It's, if you go back, I, this is what I always say. Go back, listen to Open Arms with Headphones. He is singing probably one of the best recorded vocals I've ever heard in my life, by the way. Yeah. He is... The, the volume in his voice that he's putting out, it's almost as if he's 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 whispering into someone's ear. It's 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 very light. And when we do shows on the stage, I you know I try to we as a band, we try and duplicate the record, not not the live shows, because not too many people are familiar with that. The live the live the recordings are what people hear on hear on the radio three, four times a day. So that's what we try to stay true to. But uh, yeah, when it comes to when it comes to uh, the stamina to do it, I, I've always said I don't ever want a period of stopping because I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> and then COVID came along, but you know we're we're, we're back now, and, and you know it's it's taken a minute to 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 get my sprint back up, but it's back now, and it feels good. Uh, how many how many shows a year are you doing now, Juan? Um, well, um, I think last year, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> last year we were all kind of the same boat, but, um, you know, with, with the relationships that we've, that we've, uh, gained with, you know, Walt Disney World, Florida or, or Royal Caribbean International, that has been absolutely, uh, life-changing because, you know, we're, we're on as many as 15 ships a year. Uh, usually about once a month, and we're doing multiple shows on there. So we're, for a while, like I said, in, in 13 and 14, we were probably closer to 140, 150. Now we're down probably to about 120, 130. So 
it's a it's a more comfortable manageable number when you're when you're uh you know when you're able to do the cruises and that kind of takes us away from our from our home market and you know allows us to experience the world well um now uh have you have you been able to bring your wife on any of the cruises at all or or is she not interested in that she no oh my god (laughs) let me just i don't know if she's watching right now but maybe she is but uh she's just she she's just the best i mean i I couldn't do what was that Tread carefully. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's. I, I got to tell you, like when I said in thirteen and fourteen, I was, you know, I had a newborn at home. I mean, she holds the fort down here and, and does so much that allows me to be able to leave for the amount of time that I do, and and perform and, and share the music everywhere. I couldn't do it without her. I couldn't do it. I mean, you know, we have we have three children, and and you know, I I'm dad first, and 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 you know, then I. Then I get to share the great music of Journey with everybody else when you know when when my wife is able to 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 hold down the fort here, you know, and she does it she does it because she loves to do it and and she understands that that music is my passion and so forth. But you know, it would be impossible without that support. Yeah, you know, I I can say from your wife's side, we we, I mean, there's a lot of great benefits. We get to go on cruises. We get to yeah. This great lifestyle. We get to have our husbands home in the morning. <laughs> nice. It's nice. But it's it's challenging. I, I will say it's challenging. It's challenging for the wives. It is. It is. Yeah. I, I see that. It's 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 almost that thing where like if you don't unpack your suitcase, that's the one thing that she got on me about. Because as as a musician, you know, you right. you kind of don't want to do the full unpack because then you know you're gonna forget something. <laughs> you know, there's that thing, right? I'm, I'm just that way. I'll forget if unless I pack everything same way, I'm gonna forget. But at the same time, out of respect to to your partner, you you need to. That's that's a symbol of being home when when yeah, your suitcase right. is put away. Yeah. And so I I try to do that. I'm you know I'm getting better, babe. <laughs> but yeah, I try. That's what I try to do. That's what I try to do. So in answering your question about whether or not she's been able to travel, she's been able to travel. Uh, because I've done some shows with WCR as well uh, yeah. on some of those cruises. But when it comes to the Royal Caribbean stuff, it's I'm gone, you know, four or five days and, you know, she has work and the kids have school. So it's been yeah. tough, but, but we are definitely now that they're a little bit older, we definitely are going to have to make the time to, to have them. Come so home. your, your children, what, what are the ages of your children? Well, I'll start from youngest to oldest. So my son, he's he's nine years old. His name is Diego. Okay. And then my middle is Emma. She's 11. She'll be 12 at the end of the month. In fact, her first DSB show, she was six weeks old. Wow. At Santa, at Santa Clarita at Central Park. It was, oh, it was so yeah. I remember that show. I like, that like, well, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Meaningful show. It was like 11,000 people. There. It was crazy. Yeah. And then yeah. and then my eldest, Isabella, she's in college. She's at uh, University of Nevada, Reno. Yeah. And she's up there. So, you know, we, we just got to see her this weekend. She was in town and got to love on her a little bit as well. But, you know, it's, I think if anything, if anything, you know, you can lead by example as a parent. And I think that's, that's kind of what we try to do. I, you know, my, my wife has been very diligent about working to attain her goals. And, and so they get that sort of work ethic from her. And then I think for me, I think they, they've learned to, really love what they want to do and because you know what's that saying right you 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 love what you do you don't work a day in your life and and i think that's that's one thing that they get to see every weekend when I, when daddy's gone you know they get to know why they get to know why so, by the way one uh have you thought about like how long you want to do this i mean have you put like a uh you know uh a, a cap, cap on it yeah jim jim's like oh, man that's a that's a tough thing you know <laughs> <laughs> some of the some of the biggest working bands like like Zepp again or, or Queen Nation or some of these some of these uh, you know legends almost in the tribute scene that you can say for real I, I mean it I mean it uh, uh, it's it's great because you guys are, are paying tribute to bands that either the, they don't exist anymore or the singer is no longer there, but journey is going strong. So it's yeah, like they if they keep going for a while, then maybe there's room at the end of that for us to continue. We'll see. We'll see. But 
as far as I know, we're still doing, you know, fi- I've been doing this for 15 years. We still do everything in the original keys. Yeah. And, uh, and I think if we can do it 15, why can't we do another 10, 15, you know, why not? Well, That's we raised great. our children. I mean, all of our children, they're in their thirties, right? Mm-hmm. That's right? Our youngest yeah. is 30. We have a 33 and a 34 and they all were raised with Zeppelin. And- <laughs> yeah. They're still trying to get over that. Yeah, they're, they're- <laughs> That was my thing. I was like, uh, wow. When I, I, I don't know what's going to happen when my kids realize that when they hear Journey on the radio, that it's not me. That, that was, I, I think they're going to think their dad's like the biggest fraud ever. They're going, wait a second. I, we made them go to so many shows. They don't go. Oh, yeah. They don't go to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they don't do them anymore. Well, they don't do them anymore. Not anymore. No. Yeah. Oh, every once in a while. Oh, every once My son was at the canyon the other night. My yeah. son was at the canyon a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's so. I mean, yeah. it's what once a year they they grace us with their presence, yeah. you know, once yeah. twice a year. But um, is, there, <laughs> is there is there any one moment over those fifteen years, uh, one that was more memorable than any of the others? I mean, you you think about a night where you just said, "Man, that was the most memorable night in DSB's history." Uh, I mean, I just kind of mentioned, you know, my. When when Eva was six weeks old at her first show, uh, yeah. obviously, um, uh, when I announced I was on, I was at Starlight Bowl, which by the way we're doing this weekend. Oh, uh, oh on, man! On July seventeenth, we're doing Starlight Bowl, seven oh, p.m. show. I'd love to be at Starlight oh, Bowl. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's where I announced I was having a son. You know, that I had two girls that so have a son. That was a very memorable moment. Oh wow! But yeah. I have to say, I have to say, you know, right up there with those two, I, I think was. The the world's greatest tribute bands when that came about that was that was a crazy thing because we were doing we were uh, it was to a national audience and I think more we'd already done shows to big audiences in person but to to reach so many homes that was a big deal for us because um, you know this just that doesn't happen to tribute bands <laughs> oh <you laughs> really. Know. It doesn't really. So to, to be um, millions of homes. I'm going to be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna yeah. be working with Katie in February. We're doing the reunion. By the oh, way. Oh, get out of here. That's great. Yeah. If, if, if you happen to be in town, so uh, we would love to have you come and sing a few songs with oh, the house. Can, yeah. Yeah. That would be That'd awesome. awesome. That would be, uh, I know you live in, in Vegas, but if it yeah. happens to be at a time where you're, you know, you're in LA for some reason. Yeah, uh, just let me know. Well, it was supposed know. to happen. Yeah. It was supposed to happen in 2020, February, but mm-hmm. obviously that didn't happen. No, so. it did happen in 2020. No, in February, but it, 2021 but, was done. Yeah. So 2022. Okay. All right. So, yeah. yeah, that would be that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I haven't seen Katie uh, for for some time, but uh, yeah. yeah, that was a um, very memorable night. We're like gonna keep it going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, a couple of people have asked this question on on the thread. Uh, Have you met any of the members of Journey and what were the circumstances surrounding those encounters? That was a that was a fun moment because it was the first time I, when I was talking to, to Blondie here. Um, I was saying you're very lucky that you got to see Steve Perry live in person. I never got to see that. I didn't. Oh, you never that. did. Never got to see him live, and I and I and you know I wish I could have, but um, yeah. I was able to see Arnell's first show back in 2008. Oh, wow. oh there we yeah. are. There it is. So. Yeah, so the circumstance behind that was I, I just got to be fanboy and, and just it was great. I you know did the meet and greet thing and, and was able to, you know, I met all the guys, you know, Neil Sean, Jonathan Kane, and Arnel Pineda, who, who was I think he had done one show in Vegas, like a it was his first public show that they actually uh, uh, they they filmed, I believe. I believe they filmed that show. And you know, got to meet Dean Castronovo and and Ross Valerie. So that was that was a big deal. That was a big deal. And people yeah. always, people always ask me, did you tell them what you did? I was like, no. That was that was <laughs> that was strictly that was strictly me finally get to shake the hand of the of the people that that I listen to and 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 you yeah. know get to perform their music all the time. That's so right. That was, that was a really good time. Really, really good time. Now, um, was there ever a time? Yeah, because we went and saw Journey with Steve uh, Jerry. Yeah, <clears throat> I think they at were, the Irvine Meadows. Yes, that's yeah. right. And um, you know, he sounded great. 
Now, near the end of the night, you know, it, you could tell he was starting to fatigue. A bit. Yeah, he was. You know, so was. I was kind of wondering, is he, <clears throat> is he really pushing it to, and kind of singing out of his range a bit? You know, well, lo and behold, a couple of years later, he got nodules on his chords and, you know, had to so leave terrible. the band. Yeah. It, now, was there ever a time where you're thinking, man, I would love to contact them and audition for the group? Was there ever it wasn't, a it didn't come through. Uh, it was by no, uh, I wasn't seeking it out. Uh, at the time, I remember that distinctly, that time frame. It was right in that uh, 2007, 2008 area. And uh, I was actually working with uh, Jonathan Kane's brother, uh, Muggs Kane. He's a he's a musician in, in LA, uh, great drummer, you know, played for Michael Bolton and all that kind of stuff. And I was doing a casino gig with him and uh his his uh he was like i should i should uh present you to my brother and, and see and you know let me hear you sing open arms and this and that and so I, I i sung it for him and he was like yeah that would be amazing let me talk to my brother well in the interim they had found her now i see i'm not saying that i even you know that i that, that it was just one of those things you know obviously obviously i remember being a fan of arnell's right from the beginning as well like before journey had even named him I, I had seen his videos on youtube and i was already going like this guy's incredible this guy's amazing so it's great that they found arnell um you know it, it's 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 fine you know i if, if if things had gone another way then you wouldn't have dsp maybe so <laughs> everything works out <laughs> yeah yeah well, i mean i mean i i love arnell i think he's got a great voice too but honestly when that happened i thought to myself they needed to contact juan yeah i i mean I, I was, that's, right, that's sweet. Yeah, but I like I, I said, I was so new to the tribute scene. I was so new to just I was kind of plugged, getting plugged in, but it took it took a while. It took a while. Like I said, if you think about it, I, I said that 2012 was really when DSB started kind of taking their stride. That's, you know, six years, you know, five years after. So, you know, it was obviously uh, Arnell's, you know, he was kind of predestined to do it and, and he came in and, and it, the story is phenomenal. I think they're making a movie about it. Uh, it really gave and, and breathed new air uh, to Journey. And, and just like we've seen when we've had mem new members come on for us, it, it kind of reignites and, and makes things new again, makes things fresh again. And I think sure. every band needs that. Or any relationship needs that, you know. Yes. Truthfully, yeah. so and that's what a band is, in, in, in effect, is, is right. A, is a so, so, aside from Journey, which obviously you love, who are some of your other favorite tribute art, or not tribute, but just artists in general? Well, like I said before, I I, I really gravitate towards towards the singers and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I was a I was a big fan of Lincoln Park when they hit, and so sad to see Chester, you know, uh, uh, leave us, but. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy uh, new bands which are kind of Zeppelin-like. You know, Greta Van Fleet's an amazing band. Love them. And what the Foo Fighters are doing now, even after their, their long career, uh, they're just they're just it right now. Foo Fighters are uh, – that's what I said. I, was like, I always gravitate towards the singer and Dave Grohl, aside from being an incredible front man and a great vocalist and a great guitarist and drummer and just one of the coolest dudes on the planet. Oh, He's, yeah. That's, that's one of those bands that – I mean, tell me where they're playing, and I want to go see it. I want to go see yeah. it. We got a long one from Gig here. He, this, this is like a book. that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read that? Um, yeah, I'm seeing it now. Hey, DC, I'm thoroughly enjoying this intimate conversational hang. Your upbringing in the theater has always shown through, to, thrown, shown through to me in the way you designed, built, and delivered your show. I always greatly appreciate your keen sense of what entertains. And of, of show business in general. Well, thanks, Gig. Yeah. <laughs> we need to do this every Wednesday, you know. What I mean? like, well, you guys do, you guys do. But I mean, this is great daily affirmation. No, this is awesome. No, Gig, and 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 I could say the same for you, man. You you've always been an absolute pro. And anytime, anytime we get an opportunity to work with you, we're just always pleased. Whether it be the long run or or any, anything else, when you you know, when when you put us on shows or whatever. But uh, that's okay. why Catalina, that's the thing. When we were in Catalina, like we never get to see the bands that we want to see because we're always working the same nights. So unless you're on a double bill, you don't get to really appreciate all the talent that's outside of your own band. So so Let can we agree? Oh Larry says uh he was at he was at your five-year anniversary show. Yeah. Anniversary. Yes. Oh, great time. 
But I, but I want to touch yeah. on I want to touch on 1982. Yes, great. Yeah. What what about yeah. my my first introduction to Journey? <laughs> that was was that your first concert? I was 14. I was 14. It was. Ah, uh, see, I, that's why you're and, hooked. And I saw Journey, Steve Perry, Neil Sean. I mean, all those guys. Yeah. In 1982, and I was done. I was done. <laughs> well, that yeah. was, I mean, that was the, the fame lineup. It was amazing. The fame lineup right there, you know. You had uh, Steve Smith on drums, and obviously yeah. you, uh, Ross Mallory. So can I show band. you? Can I show you right here? Yeah. Yeah, that is that is so awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my God. Blue Oyster Cult. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It was amazing. Let's let's yeah. get rid of that. That's, That's um, Rose Bowl So it was just you and a hundred thousand of your friends. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> intimate show, just a little intimate show at the Rose Bowl. Well, uh, yeah, really. The Rose Bowl. <laughs> uh, one on the Escape Tour. I, I was such a huge fan. I saw them four nights in a row at the Forum. Four nights in a row. I got tickets four nights in a row. What was, are you doing? That you're, you're like balling back then. You could just afford to go see Journey four times in a row. Good luck doing that now. <laughs> That's awesome. And then, so that was four times at the Forum, two times out in Santa Barbara. So, I, I mean, I was just a huge fan at that time. I mean, uh, I couldn't get enough of them. And Perry was just incredible. All four nights of that run. I mean, it, it was it was an unbelievable experience for me. You know what yeah. I learned about what I learned about Steve Perry. Sorry, I think I there's a little bit of lag there. Um, what I learned about Steve Perry is obviously he was doing this at a time when there there weren't in ear monitors, you know. And oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So you you keep asking me, you know, what's the secret? Well, like I said, sleep, water, and no alcohol, and then in your monitors that's a big part of it too because you're you're not having to to push your voice to to the extent that you would if you didn't have them but as far as i understand he would have mains pointed they were up in the rafters and they would point down at him so he was getting he was getting uh you know front of house audio pointed directly at the stage while he was performing well yeah yeah i mean no i i had just discovered what it means to be properly hydrated just at the start of this year <laughs> get a huge difference from my voice but how many glasses of water do you drink a day at one i will say it's it's tough being living in vegas because you do get a little bit of that vegas throat but um you know the hard part for me is like i i gotta drive down to la to do a show and I don't want to hydrate too much because then I'm pulling over every 10 minutes. <laughs> but, then, but then I have to be hydrated, you know, for the show that night if I'm coming down the day of. So truthfully, the secret there is getting a humidifier. So you're kind of breathing in that, that you know, that humidity and, and that helps a little bit, I guess. I don't know if that's directly, you know, hydrating, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's great for the skin too. Um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but no, seriously, like for me, it's like I carry around my gallon. I carry on my gallon and I, and I try to drink that before the show. And then during the show, I'll get through at least a, either a half of it or three quarters of it during the show. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's really made a huge difference for me. The water. I did, I, the water just, before general. I was drinking a lot of fruit juice and, you know, I'd maybe drink one or two glasses of regular water. And then I got online and found out that I need to be drinking 14 glasses a day to stay properly hydrated. And he 14. does. And, and he I, does. And I'm doing it. And, and I'm in the bathroom it. every half hour. Get out of here. Why? They have those bottles. They have those bottles. I just bought one for Stacy. <laughs> yes. You're, that you're that right. like that says the 9 a.m., 10 a.m. That tells you where you should be yeah, when you, when you drink right. those. That's right. Uh, See, that's that's gonna be my Christmas present. Right? Um, <laughs> I'll send you one, Jim. I'll send you yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and, and then she can be dazzling, you know. She can do she can everything. That's, I love that. I love that you did that for Bob. I love that you did that. Was it cool? Well, yeah. She. I mean, any, she can put anything on any cup. It's it's amazing. She's so uh, creative with the designs she's doing for all these people. They usually just say, "Hey, do what you." Think I love it best. when they just give me creative. 
you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's great to have that outlet, and you do such a great job on them. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, they're yeah. one of a kind. That's the thing. They're one of a kind. They are one of a kind. You're right. right. You're right. <laughs> um, so, so one, if if you could, if you had the time, I know, I know, it'd be extremely difficult, but at this point, if you could do another tribute band. Or maybe you've not you, journey, even thought not about journey, it. Yeah, anything not other than journey. Not journey. Who, who would you pay who, tribute to? Who would it to? be? Uh, you know, like I said before, it's it's you know you have to be the fun in being in a tribute for me is being accurate. And I don't I don't I don't particularly think I I sound like anybody else unless of course we're talking about something in Spanish. So if I was to do some something else, it would probably be if I was going to do another tribute, it might be to an artist. In Spanish, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I haven't really thought about that because, like I like I was saying, you know, I think DSB can go much longer, so that's that's kind of my focus. But sure. you know, I, I don't I don't sound like Mick Jagger, and and you know, <laughs> Stones are out for me, so I, I don't want to do that. But just by the virtue of your range, I mean, you must have guys telling you all the time, "Hey, we're starting a Boston tribute, man. Would you sing for us?" Oh, or, there you, you go. Get those well, we've we've tried to do that in DSP because we've we've you know sometimes we like to throw in a cover from the same era. Oh yeah, because awesome. you know there's you know Tony's super super talented vocally and Henry is as well, so we like to feature the other the other vocalists in the band as well. And you know, Foreigner came up and and oh yeah, I I got a shot or a crack at, at singing the Foreigner stuff, and and they all look at me and go. You sound like Steve Perry singing. For me. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it's in the cards for me. I don't think it's in the oh, cards. So 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 someone said Selena. 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 <laughs> Selena. <laughs> well, um, now now similar similar tessitura similar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, did, Love did, Selena though. Did sounding like Steve Perry though just come naturally, or do you have to work to try to sound like him? Just so you started that's, saying, that's man, a good question. No, that's oh. a good question. I don't. I mean, here's the thing, I, Steve. There's only one Steve Perry, and 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 uh, I think there's there's probably three or four notes in my voice that that make people kind of perk up and it sounds familiar. Um, but uh, in terms of in terms of sounding like him, there, yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing an uh, imitation or impersonation. It's I, I use my voice, but what I do is I I do the phrasing that he does. You know, I wouldn't I would never sing la. I would never do that. That's how he does it. You know. Sure. But, sure. but you know, I would probably just do something a little bit more R and B and stuff. But he's yeah. the thing. The thing. You know. You know. I think where where our my vocal style kind of really aligns to Steve Perry is that. We we grew up listening to the same people. Remember, I told you I was doing doo wop early in, yeah. in the nineties and stuff. And and it's funny. I actually I remember the, his story about Sam Cooke kind of echoes my story with, with with Steve Perry because I remember him telling the story about him being in a car with his mom and he heard Sam Cooke come on the radio and he's yeah. like, "Who yeah. is that?" And it was Cupid. You know, it was that. It was that thing, and then for me, it was the same thing. I was riding to school in the car with my mom, and 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 open arms come on, and I'm going like, "Who is that?" So it's kind of the same thing, and and you know that's he he draws a lot from you know he drew at the time a lot from some from Sam Cooke. If you listen to early Sam Cooke stuff, a lot of the uh, you know the, the lyrical uh, embellishments and so forth, they're 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 very much in line with. With Sam Cooke, it was obviously an influence on him, and he was never shy about it. And just yeah. like I'm never shy about the fact that Steve Perry was a huge influence, but there's a whole nother line of, of, of singers that 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 I draw influence from as well. And just like any other singer, you know, we we all pull from our influences and we 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 shape and, and become our 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 own artist. And you know, that's I've had the opportunity to do that as well. And you know, right now it's it's just I'm I'm in the I'm in the tribute journey thing, and it's and it's fun. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even as we're talking, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> things are coming to me, and I'm going, man. I know I've I've had a hundred questions to ask one. One of them is, and it just came to me. What is the highest note that you can hit in your full voice range before going into falsetto? Well, see, that's that's the thing. Is like I never sing in my full voice range, really, unless. Um, let's see. What songs do we do? Everything is, 
you know, if, if, if you're speaking from a vocalist perspective, you have your chest register, you have your head voice, and in between there you have your mix. And yeah. in my mix, then that's a combination of head voice and, and chest voice. So yeah. as I mentioned before, I was a boy soprano. Well, I could never really go really high in that falsetto. So I was really always stretching out my chest voice into a mix. So I found my mix so early that whenever I was singing anything high, I would just, I would mix everything. So I really, uh, I, I have a high, a very low and high mix. And I've, I've, I've made a living doing living in my mix, but in terms of the, the highest notes in the show, I think that are in mix are you know the the high E at the end of separate ways, oh. you know. But <laughs> it's That's nuts, man. It's it's all shape shape and color, you know. But yeah. when I shape and color things that that way, people think it sounds like somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, that's cool. That's cool too. You know. Yeah. That's cool too, you know? yeah. <laughs> that's cool too. Man, that I mean a high E, that's that's just that's ungodly, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, for a it's, it's up there, but you know, he he does, you know, Perry had that he it was never it was featured from time to time, but he had that whole nother level. He had that super high head voice when he's singing Mother Father and I know that's a high G, you yeah. know, or or you know, in the sky when he's going up to that going up to that F as well in oh. that falsetto. You know, also, that's that's, that would, that's up there. The note at the end of uh, La Du Da. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's up there, too. That's up there, too. I, the <laughs> guy was crazy. Here's a, I, I love Before Steve I, Perry. I just I don't know that he was really that forward thinking. Like, I don't think he ever thought that he would have to hit these notes after he recorded them in the studio. And, and wow. you know, he because as a, as, a, as a musician, you know, there, yeah. there's the there's the live version of you and then there's the studio version of you. They're both mm -hmm. they both can be equally proficient and exciting, but yeah. there's times where you lay things down and they come out and it's magic in the studio. And then now you got to go duplicate that live every night. I don't know. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, no. <laughs> so so how's your schedule? How's your schedule shaping up right now? I'm just I'm grateful that things are coming yeah. back. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, kind of just like you guys, we have a full July, full August, and you know September is getting full as well. Um, yeah, I, you know, give let's give credit to to the communities that that you know are are opening up and are open to to getting back to uh, normal. Um, yeah, because a lot aren't a lot aren't capable of of doing that and. You know, over time, the, we we will get back to normal as, as people heal and people stay healthy and so forth. But um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to to getting a, a large part of our schedule back when cruising comes back. I know yeah. I know that that's that's imminent. You know, uh, they're doing yeah. test cruises right now, and I know that uh, you know we 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 speak with Royal uh, frequently, and they they know we're ready to go when they are. Um, so yeah, we, I, at the time it, it, that all happened as well, we were ramping up our cruise schedule with Zep again. We, we were doing one a month, which was more than we yeah. had done, you know, uh, in the previous contract few years. With every month. Yeah. yeah. And, um, well, we, we kind of all started that same way, right? We didn't know what it was yeah. going to be. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, well, yeah. One, one cruise we got to play together on was that. We it was the it was the rollout of the quantum class on quantum. Yeah, that That's what was, it was. That was yeah. an amazing cruise. And yeah, remember, no Wi-Fi for free. <laughs> the plus. <laughs> yeah. No, it was like you, you, there's there's a there's kind of a stigma to to being a a cruise uh, a guest entertainer on on a cruise ship because people people think you're you know you're you got boas on and and you know you're you're spreading glitter around everywhere but that's not the case with with what what uh royal caribbean's uh vision was when they started the quantum class it was it was a very if i remember correctly they were trying to do cruises for people who don't normally cruise so it was it was a very progressive way to approach the cruising industry and as a result it gave tribute bands a home uh, aboard some incredible ships yeah. i mean you, i don't even have to tell you guys you guys have been on no. it but when we talk about what, because you know, there's there's friends that come up after shows and they want to know what's the cruising like. I got I say, 
imagine some of the most beautiful venues you've ever seen in your life. And yes. like I talk about like, uh, you know, uh, the, the 270 room, you guys played the oh. 270 room, right? It's yeah. a, the 270 degree panoramic view off the back of the yeah. ship. And yeah. in front of that, we, we play this music. Yes, and we get we get paid for it. It's like it's, <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> um, so so looking back on uh, everything that you've done musically, do you have any regrets or anything you you feel like, man, I should have done that, or um, no, I feel like it it went exactly the way it should have, or or anything you wish you you, you did did do and shouldn't have done. I don't. I don't. I think uh, I, I'm a I'm a big believer in, in being tapped on the shoulder by by God and being being steered in the right direction because I feel like that's happened my whole life. Uh, right. My parents were absolutely integral in 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 whatever successes that that I've I've been able to achieve. Uh, yeah. they, they taught me early on that you know do what you love and 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 eventually you know the, the paths will open up to you. So I think if anything had changed. Any one little thing that you don't do, you, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now, and I'm very happy being, being dad and husband, and and you know, uh, getting to share this music with everybody out there. Yeah, that's great. Well, it certainly shows that you're doing what you love because oh, yeah. you emulated on stage. The, the joy. One hundred percent. That's kind of you know. Let me confess a little bit there. It's when when you do this as long as we've done it, right? Uh, Truthfully, that's the easy part is 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 having fun up there because I'm just reflecting what you what you're giving to me. Because I look at the audience and I see I see tears, I see mm -hmm. smiles, I see uh, affection, I see yeah. I see that perfect world, that the peace that's on right. earth that everybody's looking for, and I see that right. from my vantage point. I would yeah. love to just be able to put my put a camera. For, maybe I'll wear a GoPro someday. <laughs> It'll look stupid, but I want people to see what I see because it, it it's truthfully, a great place to be. It's, it's a, great a beautiful thing, be. and 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 literally, what I'm doing is just reflecting what I see out there. Yeah, I I, I can't tell you, Juan, how many times like after <clears throat> we do a show, maybe like at, at the House of Blues or something, and you you know the crowd's going nuts, and you just feel that warmth from the audience. I I tell her, I, I said, I would just love. To come over, pull you out, and say, "Experience this." Feel it. Feel oh, it. Totally. Right. Feel it. Totally. It's like totally, yeah. you can. I, I can't even explain it. I can't even explain the feeling that you receive from the audience after a show like that. It's, you know? it's it's multiple things happen at the same time. It's the fact that there isn't another Zeppelin tribute like you guys. There just isn't. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank I mean, you. No, for real. You guys, you guys are our top dog. And when you're a group of people that do it to the level that you do it at it's it, you're kind of in a vacuum in terms of in terms of what people's expectations are in the entire experience so it's impossible to duplicate that in conversation the only way to know that is to feel it sure and, and, sure. and when well, you get that energy back from people when you when i can't even say something because people are still cheering after a song like that's that's the best thing ever yeah, yeah. Right, you, want, you want to share that with the people you love, right? Just like you said, yeah, you, know, you, want, yeah. you want her to experience that. And yeah, that's I feel right. the same way. I feel the same way. Yeah. So that applause is for you this time. You know? Exactly. <laughs> it, it's yeah. it's, it's uh, yeah. an incredible, warm, loving feeling that you can't you can't adequately describe with words. And and I I, I try to tell her about it, and I, I think, man. Unless you're actually standing there, you just won't know what that feels so like. So one of these days, know? I'm just going to walk out on stage. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to see me like. <laughs> and then our, man, our manager's going to grab the hook. And <laughs> you, need to come out, you need to come out with the best tumbler you've ever made. There you go. And just walk out, you know, spotlight on it and come out and then just take your bow and appreciate it. Appreciate it. Oh, man. Well, I. I'm telling Such you. Such a good time with one, you. Th I, oh, can, the best. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Oh, yeah. thank you, brother. It, it's <laughs> it's been such a great time, and I hate to end this because I know I'm going to be telling Brenda. Oh man, I wanted to ask Juan this. Yeah, so, you will. Uh, <laughs> the, the good thing is we're friends, and we can always talk about this. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. You're right. Yeah, we we got to meet up. I'd love for Stacy to, to get to know you guys a little bit better. They, I know they got to hang a little bit in Catalina, but. It'd be great to to you know uh, when we're down there together maybe have dinner. That would be great. We would love that. We would love that. 
<laughs> Thank you so much, Juan. And, and oh, hey, so um, uh, you want to tell people about the details for the Starlight Bowl? Oh, Starlight um, on Bowl. Saturday? Yeah, Starlight Bowl. I mean, how many places like that do we have in LA? They're, they're, it's a gem. It's a gem. And anytime you get to play there, uh, it's just, it's such a blast. You know, you can go there. You there's, I think there's even the the the, the, the what do you call it, the picnic area where people can come early and do that whole thing. But that the show is on July seventeenth, which is this coming Saturday, oh, nice. and it's uh, seven p.m. There's there's an act that starts at I believe at five forty-five, and then we go on at seven, and okay. we'll, we're just gonna hang and 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 play to play our hearts out. And you know, wow. the day after we're in Dana Point doing what we what we do with at, at you know concerts in the, in the park situation as well. And yeah. uh, there's information about all that at dsbband.com. And okay. uh, yeah, yeah, it's a perfect opportunity to come out and and you know feel the live music, feel feel the journey music out in in a live setting once again. Yeah. and you have another one of my favorite venues coming up, the Saban Theater. Uh, Saban. Yeah, yeah, August 14th. Yeah. The, yeah, uh, which really about the 14th? August 14th. August 14th. Yeah, that's yeah. that's one where a lot of nationals get to go through. So it's always it's always a treat for us to to be able to yeah. play that stage as well. It's a you know, right. storied storied venue and it's a, you know converted movie theater and all that. But you're yeah. where where it is and you know it's it's Beverly Hills, right? I think it's Beverly Hills. Oh yeah, and uh, that's. It just feels like uh, it feels like those shows that Journey used to do with the Fillmore and all, all that type of stuff. It has that sort of classic vibe to it. So that, that yeah, was a lot. yeah. So yeah. De hey, guys out there, uh, definitely mark your calendars for that one too, because yeah. that's going to be an incredible show. It's a so, good show. But Any this, this Any Saturday, show. though, yeah, this Saturday, if you're um, if you're anywhere near the San Fernando Valley, San Gabriel Valley, um, Starlight Bowl, make sure you catch them there. Beautiful. I mean, a beautiful venue. Beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's a great night. It's a great night. I have a feeling everybody With already journey. knows this. Yeah. <laughs> I have really known this, but but if you haven't seen them, go and see them. I guarantee you're going to be completely yeah. blown away. Completely. Blown All away. are welcome. You know, we, we're we're fans of Journey, just like you guys, and that's why uh, we yes. love it. So, it's it's uh it's an invitation, open invitation to everybody to come out and, and rock out with us Saturday night. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Juan. We really appreciate you spending the yeah, time. Yeah, so us, much man. fun. So much fun uh, to get to know you and talk. Love my you. time with you guys. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, and we have to plan a yeah. night. Yeah, we all, will. all of us will plan a night. Yeah, I would be... love that. Yeah, yeah we would that. love that. I love that. Sure. So, all right. <laughs> Big hugs to both of you, and, and we'll catch you soon. Okay, brother. All have right. a good night. All right. Sorry, I have to say thank you. All right, you too. Bye. All right, guys. All right, there guys. Fun uh, night. Juan Del Castillo. And, Near uh, and dear to my heart. Yes, yes. Mother, father. I think I'm going to have Alexa play mother, father as soon as we're done. <laughs> he he put that in my head. Yeah, he did. Uh, oh wait, don't uh, don't be playing it all night now though. Any of that. But I'll be remember, singing it guys, loudly for you, for those of you that are Eagles fans and who isn't. Uh, we got TLR tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah. Mountain Grove at Citra Citrus, Citrus. Plaza. We're going to be playing right in front of the habit. Yeah, so so right it's a shopping center. It's a shopping center. So I'll yeah. be bringing my credit card. So you can you can um, <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. Yeah, come and do your yeah. shopping and yeah. then enjoy some great Eagles music with the long run. We're going to be starting at seven o'clock and playing till eight thirty, and that's in the city of Redlands, Redlands, Redlands yeah. California. So um, all right, and let's talk about what we have going on. Next week, we have Bettis Richardson, yeah. which is a Prince again. Prince tribute. Yeah, but it's... Prince again is the name of the band. Yes, Prince again. And then the, the 27th, which is Tuesday, we have Gregory Finsley from Queen Nation. Yeah, yeah. yes. That's, that's going to be a fun yeah. one. That's going to be a lot of fun. So um, uh, I think that's that's think it for this done. evening. I think we're done. Anybody else have any questions? Let's 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 talk to somebody. <laughs> Where are the oh? Here's the uh, All right, bring a chair and get there at six at six p.m. tomorrow night. Oh, Deborah, De yeah, Deborah, are you coming? Are you Deborah? Is Deborah coming tomorrow night? Yeah, Deborah, are you going to be there? Are you coming tomorrow night? She says she says uh, br right. bring a chair and get there at six o'clock right. tomorrow. I guess that's just. I mean, I'll be there. Spot. I'll be there at what like three. Two sound check time. You're going to be there. At so come early and hang out with me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so if you're in the Inland Empire, Orange County, maybe even San Gabriel Valley, come on out and join us. It's yeah. free. Uh, we're going to throw in as many Eagles hits as we can into a 90 minute period. It's so. going to be all of 
all of the Eagle Fits. Yeah, we're going to do as many as we can in 90 minutes. <laughs> okay. So uh, please um, come on out and join us. It's going to be a blast. Laura wants to know, Blondie, how, okay, Tumblr. How do I order a Tumblr? I'm going to throw them? this up. <laughs> all right, you guys. Tumblr, it would be www.theblondiecollection.com. Contact me or, or contact me on Facebook. Either way. I'm going to have to fill that up. Yeah. You're out. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you for being with us tonight, uh, guys. Remember to join us next Monday night with Bettis Richardson from Prince again. Yep. And uh, we're going to be starting at 7 o'clock as usual. Monday night. Monday. Monday. Night. Monday. It's not Wooten Wednesday. No, it's, nope, gonna be, it's uh, Monday. Because Wooten edition. has stuff going on in Wooten yes. Wednesday. And we're going to be back to ask the eternal question. What's, what's happening? happening? <laughs> All right, you guys. God bless Have you. A good Keep night. on rocking in the free world. And we will see you tomorrow night with the long run at Mountain Grove at Citrus Plaza, right in front of the Habit in Redlands, California. Monday night, tomorrow, uh, next week with Bennett. For WAW. Yep. Yes. Thank you so much. Have a great night, everybody, and we'll see you next week. Bye, we'll guys. see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys.